Hello everybody! It's time, once again, for some goddamn reason. <sighs> We're gonna play I Love You Colonel Sanders. Uh, okay, so, the story so far. We've enlisted in a three day semester. Um, a course which will help us to discover the secrets of cooking and become master chefs. However, um, we are being slightly distracted. Number one, we're being distracted by our best friend, um, who's totally into us. Although she might now be totally into a robot? Don't know. Or, there's also Colonel Sanders, who is already perfecting his chicken recipe, and we want to know what it is. However, Mysterious forces are at work. And it's it's unfortunate, but you know, it's it's getting in the way. It's getting in the way between us, the chicken, and this this look at him. This Adonis. Um so we've got this uh it is a branching story. So we're about to start day two. Um, we had an interesting situation. We ended up being a, a big massive fight at the end with RPG elements and all sorts of other things. Um, but uh, currently, Colonel Sanders quite impressed with us. And we've already figured out one of the secret herbs and spices. Also, totally weren't going to make out with him in the square, but got interrupted by this monster. Um, so it's all going well. You guys are the ones picking the route. You're making the decisions. Uh, hands off the wheel <laughs> for this. So um, let us continue doing what we were doing. Also, let's make sure I'm suitably branded up. Um, also, Like, comment, and subscribe. You know, I thought I'd get myself in a proper, proper place with this. So, uh, it's pretty cold now, but I'll be tucking in some actual KFC while doing this. But it's secretly a burger. Hingle, how dare you! Mm hmm. So anyway, as I as I enjoy the chicken, actually I get I get to enjoy this while you guys make decisions. So if you take too damn long, it's just it's fine with me. Um, you awake on day two? Attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? Yeah, you know, we might we might have sort of gone to the other side. Um, of reality, thanks to these herbs and spices, um, which, which begs the question: Is KFC putting marijuana in their um, in their recipe, or is 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 what is is LSD a herb or is it a spice? It's really kind of difficult to decide. Mm. Very good. So you awake on day two and attempt to press the wall, head. You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling. Thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders's cooking yesterday. Yeah, it definitely says cooking. Um, you can't believe he really used. <laughs> and then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he trusts you. He already trusts you so much. Well done, everybody. Colonel Sanders trusts us. Now we break him! Or you do. I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm not. Hands off the wheel. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launched into a story of her own. I'm very concerned considering she was last seen with this robot. 
Thank you, SJ. <laughs> um, uh, so our best friend is Miriam, who's here. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be... Um, I think I might like Clank! Clank, unsurprisingly, is this robot. Like him? Like Clank? So, uh, we're, we're playing as Tanner. Again, we're still playing as Tanner. Um, real life Tanner has been in hospital for surgery on um, gentleman's area in a very serious manner. Uh, and uh, I wish him very well. He, he needs he needs to he's rest himself up. Uh, could have been very serious. If you are a guy, please make sure you do you know, check yourself regularly and and make sure if you if you're feeling pain there of any kind, you know, consult a doctor. Um, Tanner was lucky, as it happens, and uh, everything's fine. Uh, like him, like him, like him, like 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 likes. Wait, wait, is there a like like? No. I know it sounds like it like it's moving too fast. But there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got to talking after class. Uh, he's a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to and was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. Man, he's dreamy. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. You're a thing now? Oh, we, we definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Doesn't involve cooking, but it does. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her you know a second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up, realizing that we've already done this a little bit, but we're getting <laughs> we've been round back a bit by the game, so we'll continue anyway. Anyway. She, her eyes light up. Thanks to a switch in, switch in the middle of her back. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there like a dramatic echo in here? Echo, echo. Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Yep, it's just us in the chat. So, this summer... I was on vacation with my family. A lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. That's not a euphemism at all. This can't be good. He told me about his passion for spices. Secret spices! The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And so I did him a big favour, I could have some of my own. He called it Iocane powder. Apparently it's odourless, tasteless, dissolves instantly in liquid, and is one of the more deadlier poisons known to man. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavour was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal by the meaning of spices here. Oh, okay. I was, uh, turns out I was on the money. <laughs> Whatever. Anyhow, we both showed interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know of one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be made use to anybody. Please, please, 
Please, it would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. I'm crying. Right. What do you think you should do? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Twitch, now is your time. Now is your time to rise forth and tell us the way. Tell her the ingredient Colonel Sanders told you or make up a fake ingredient. Uh, we're a lot, Glim, for make up a fake ingredient. Sort of pepper, only one though. <laughs> right. You quickly think up a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about... It was Eye of Newt! I know, sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow! Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity, and she'll move on. However... She immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. You can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people. You're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossoms petals fill the air. Oh my god, look at him. He's magnificent. <clears throat> it's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. I have your chicken. Right. Uh, oh, good! Another chance, chat! Um, stand back and admire his majestic glory or run to him! Stand or run? In, in the chat, please. Stand or run? Streaming eating isn't conflicted again. Oh! Now it's a bit more difficult. Do you do you stand back and admire him or do you run to him? Are you, are you gonna get, is it a bad sign if you run to him? Is he, you're coming on too keen. But if you don't run to him, other people might get there first. Run to him! You decide the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. I this isn't going to spook the horse, actually, I've just realised. <laughs> um, surely he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. <laughs> oh, no, it does it. <laughs> However, your sudden surprise, your sudden movement surprise the horse. It rears up, kicking you directly in the face. It whispers friendship is magic in your ear and then runs off. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. <laughs> See, told you. <laughs> Welp. Um, I suppose this could have gone better, but is he going to tend our wounds? Oh, no. It's the void again. In the darkness, you see a vision, but everywhere you look is the darkness, darkness. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's the ghost of the bloody student from uh, from the previous. Ooh. Ooh. Actually, no, I've got to remember it. It's like, Ooh, Tanner, I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. Woo! I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times, or alternatively five times in a mirror. And that name is... But before we can continue, you're suddenly awake. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, oh, Rick. You're awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. Oh, yeah. He rails you back to life with a sach satchel of secret spices, or is that just his natural seasoned musk? <laughs> oh. 
I, you know what? I, when I started Twitch eight years ago, doing stuff on Twitch eight years ago, I honestly didn't think that I would spend my time, you know, eight years later, and the result of the result of it all would be to talk about about the natural seasoned musk of Colonel Sanders. Okay. Okay. Well, good news. You've got another choice, everybody. Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes or lean in for a kiss. Right, in the chat, I want shoes or snog. One of the two. Shoes or snog. It's going to be shoes then. <coughs> Maybe you shouldn't be riding a horse to school. Or Maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. <laughs> but one thing's for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. Well, that's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. With that, Colonel Sanders disappeared into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals. Ashley and Van Van are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad. Trying to get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder. But he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why do you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature. Or act like you're not interested in them, but really try to get a closer look. Yes, you forgot about the Jojo character. <laughs> There's no character on this screen that's remotely like a Jojo character. I don't know what you're talking about. Van Van is is nothing like Jojo. Not a remote this bit of similarity. Literally, there's not one letter in this. Not one letter between the two names which are similar. At all. Hey, uh, Twitch unboxing video. Turns out it was a burger. You mean to dress the rivals down for their immature behaviour? Culinary school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is wasting everyone's time. Now you've upset them. Well, now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules. I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. It doesn't hurt to use little evil. If you get a look at what they were hiding, you instantly recognise it. It's a book! Just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad! Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hide the book behind his back. I know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice they haven't just been studying a book, they've got pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. <laughs> We're playing! <laughs> Before you can dig any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep. Beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's beaty foot. <gasps> hey! Watch out, you bucket of bolts! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything apart from, you know, physically harm you. Bzz, bump. Who do you think you're talking to? I never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp, womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Where is, where is? Van Van jumps to attack Clank. But Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. 
Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone is completely changing. Uh, what a staff that is. Wow. Completely changing instance. She bats her eyes at Colonel Sanders. Surely you must know this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lost the aspirations. I've got a career to focus on. Oh, maybe I could help you with your business plan. Never say a business plan like that ever again, Kevin. What the hell? What the hell? Um. <clears throat> Just then, Sprinkles. Um, Sprinkles. Sprinkles, who is a dog and also our, our cooking instructor. Arrived to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Struns, Struns, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tired legs are very, very tight. I don't know why he's suddenly German, but he is. But I am here now, yeah? And I hope you are ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly, he loves it. Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's a scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Concerning. Sprinkles jumps at you and licks your face. Down, boy! Down! I've toppin'! That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what was up with that. Clearly one of the herbs and spices must be dognip. This all makes sense now. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom via the aid of a coup. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. <laughs> Don't nip and fear it in that nip. <laughs> you want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help daydream about Colonel Sanders. You miss most of the important parts. Wow. Now, when you come true, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Dana. Naturally, this appears to you to be a sample platter. What item do you want to sample, guys? A glass of water, a shimmering pepper, or a dog biscuit? Catnip, <laughs> yeah. Dog nip is inferior to catnip. Uh, and also catnap. Although a catnap's pretty damn good. Um, so, uh, water, pepper, or biscuits. We're going to have the shimmering pepper. The bright colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in the most eye catching way. So naturally, you reach out and grab it and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. Well done, you guys. You've got us to play drugs again. My friend. Ooh. This guy again. I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> Sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, it'll work through. <coughs> To fulfill <coughs> the prophecy, <coughs> you must 
<coughs> you feel yourself beginning to regain consciousness. Oh, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. <gasps> Guys! Guys! That pepper was last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever! You've, you've literally... <laughs> you've made a plant extinct. Guys, what have you done? You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Someday? Come on, it's time for lunch. Oh, good. It's time for lunch. Fantastic. Well, I've got this bloody KFC to eat still. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared by a time competitive... By a time... Sorry. <clears throat> Don't steal my line. I'm sorry. By a timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Lunch will be the second various pepper. Then. I don't know, it might be. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time or step up and tell them you're on. Do you tell them off again, or are you gonna, or are you gonna step up and fight? Everyone's pitching. Everyone's picking like a, a, a non-existent option three. Look, it's just those two. Which of them do you want? All right, okay, it's a tie, so we're gonna do a tiebreaker with this twenty pence, please. Okay. Ahem. Uh. Heads is stop wasting time. Tails is step up and tell them you're on. He's indeed a head. Right, so we're going to stop wasting everyone's time. Is everything a competition with you two? Yes. Yes. Well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey to learn, to love, to learn, to love. Sure, why not? But definitely not to constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your genres crossed. Don't you have some portable monsters or to capture or something? I need to eat if I'm going to have the energy to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. How are any of us supposed to get anywhere? We're, we're constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all of an apron. Besides, I already bought my own lunch. Tanner, you should have it. It will give you the energy you need to succeed. Miriam reaches out and presents a gift to you. Oh my good. My special grilled cheese and tomato soup with chocolate milk to wash it down and a tartlet for dessert. It only takes you about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food, presumably with all the various utensils and plates and everything else along with it. But it's just what you needed for motivation. You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle anyway. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkles steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports... Not a sportsing court. <laughs> Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Just a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh. I stand corrected. It was a bell you want, it's a bell you'll get. My bestie can get to <coughs> My bestie can best the best of them. Best believe it. Or my name's not Tanner, which it actually isn't. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. 
I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Right. Oh, guys. Please pick fast. <laughs> right. Uh, it was supposed to turn the heat on. 100 degrees C. Blah, 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 blah. You're not going to get a chance. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it without you. I'm going to do it. Yeah, 100 degrees C. There is no way for to do this for this. Okay, so. When I guess to rub my furry belly, that, that enticing offer motivate you. Uh, what would be even better is if I could see the game again. There you go. Game, thank you. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Herbs and spices. It's 11 herbs and spices. That's right. You may not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're heading in the right direction. Sprinkles is... <sighs> Tail wagging intensifies. Now you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavour? Vigilance, trust or gratitude? Oh, I didn't get a chance to pick. I was still reading it. That's wrong. I'm begging. I beg you to get together. Get it on a dog. It's never the wrong time to, for some dog jokes. Next question. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you never to forget that you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Small town where dreams are born, the shoulder of Ryan deep beneath the surface. The small town where dreams are born, clearly. That's right, this is your shot, you're not going to miss it. Aru! Try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling. That's wrong, apparently! Don't make me get the spray bottle! Next question. This cuts on out the corner of your eye. I believe in you. I believe in you, Tanner! He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. All you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy was it? Ah, bah, bah, bah. You are saying that there's only one cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. Oh, God, he's not giving me any chance to do anything. <laughs> I know, right? You know what? You shouldn't... You know what? You shouldn't you be focused on the challenge. You're falling behind. Uh, Colonel Sanders on the beach. What if you crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? I don't know. Wolf, wolf! You're really struggling to keep up. And this, thanks, Shepard. Ashley has already begun plating elements of our dish. It's colourful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Uh, yikes. Uh, I know you're nothing more than seeing a fellow apprentice, util a fellow appliance utilised in the kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Where you might not have any hands, but Tana does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to make to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand in the mix to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Tana, no! But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the cookie spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand to rest the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stops what you're doing. Everyone, st everyone stop what you're doing now. The battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Here I am, a completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, I wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Tanner's injury. See, Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks on to the dish. But I suppose you could at least tell us what you prepared. <coughs> well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavour that tastes good and tells a story. 
of excellence. I was going to ask Tennant to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring that cr this cream of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden therein. Inside your inside you find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and a pearls of blueberry jelly. <laughs> oh, Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Simplicity isn't your strongest <laughs> strongest suit, is it, Ashley? More brutal than the custard game. I don't know, maybe. <gasps> oh, you? <laughs> As he places the sauce covered finger to, into his. As he places the sauce covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his moustache. Internalize the rage you feel or put yourself between Colonel Sands and Ashley. Guys, make the right decision here. You're risking our love. Look, look, it's internal rage. Your rage burns so intensely with your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and they turn to ash and they fall off of your face, which means people have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. Maybe you've made the wrong decision again, guys. <laughs> um, the beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. <gasps> but wait, it's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and decide to get married or something. And I hate him, really, but I love him so much. And oh, my God. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding, but you're a terrible chef and an awful person. He's trying to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from the run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. Oh my god, look at his face! He's worried, he's concerned. I'm fine, can you just leave me alone? I'm a loser, I'm not fit to fill your fryer. That is a euphemism. Um, I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in the culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. Well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but even but I even failed as a mule handler. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. So this guy could really use a hug. I don't have an option to give him a hug? Three out of ten, what's going on? Um, I resolved that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As you see Colonel Ch Sanders change focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure could be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure, it's honest, it's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! This is your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy present. Oh god, it's the bloody sport monster again, lads. <laughs> Battle's gone off month four, you prepare for the worst. 
Gorko the Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. Yeah, I was feeling a bit of deja vu at this. I'm sorry, Gorko. I, I could have sworn we already defeated you in battle last night. That was Borko, my twin, and I, Gorko, am here to avenge him. Are you stronger than Borko? Well, we're twins, so no, not really. We're pretty much exactly equal in every way. Why do you ask? Carl Sanders spurks. He's already on the same page as you. Since we brought Borko pretty easily, so I don't think you have much of a chance. Not to mention I feel really guilty about that, but I can take it back. You know, I would. I think what Tanner is saying is... Can we just be friends? Life's too short to be making enemies. I suppose. We really don't need to fight. Since we've got these play teeth and claws. All the better for enjoying tasty food. Surely you like to eat. Don't we all? Of course I do. Inspiration strikes. You come up with a quick idea. Chomp on this. Tells a biscuit into Gorko's open mouth and he devours it in one gulp. Delicious! You're much nicer than the evil students who once upon a time turned me into this creature who stands here today. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a chihuahua. But I was still a student at this school. Until one day some mean kids with a magic spell but cast a dark enchantment on me. And I was forever transformed. A magic spellbook. Precisely. Borko used to have a copy, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you. Respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the t kitchen of life. Tanner, together I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like. But it sounds like you're about to find out. Oh yeah! Don't tell me that the transfer shoot for the final day. No, I think you're fine. Get that. Mm, okay. okay. <coughs> <coughs> Stepping inside Alexander's home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. You also see an urn on the table, and are immediately concerned that one of the herbs and spices is the remains of one of his relatives. You quickly eye about the room looking for an exit you could use and seeing none you decide to listen to him further i like it looks like you live such an exciting life colonel sanders every day can be an advantage if you approach it with the right attitude a while ago i made a decision to never stop searching never stop working never stop imagining have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately i'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavours and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. Uh, it's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? Reveal it or keep it a secret. Guys in the chat, now is your time once again. Do we share the secret? I mean, he shared the secret with us. Or do we keep it as a secret? Because, you know, he might steal it. Don't look, those pre don't look those pretty eyes there in the corner. You know, the ones, you know. The ones blinking at you. Don't, don't, just, don't, don't be fooled by them. Reveal it! 
You decide that you're ready as an be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders. Because of his Lux hideaway. <gasps> he gasped! Magnificent. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw. Now just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think it back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. I'm gonna put on something more comfortable, or take off something less comfortable, or something. You realize now be a perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can take a look at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap an item to discover more about the Colonel. Okay. You gaze out of the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Um, what's this here? Just in the ghost of stupid. Oh, piss off, student! Are you thinking about heading out into the world on the quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never learned your name. Why would I avenge you? Oh, I could just tell you my name right, right now. It's. Can't you see him in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out with the breeze. <laughs> Tap, anyway, where was I? This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think forever. What number is important to Colonel Sands? It dawns on you. As soon as you dial, dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? Hmm. Take a close look at a large urn she's got near my pencil. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you read the inscription. It says, Here lies the ashes of all my past careers and businesses. Business failures. Jeez. Poor guy. Um, right. I think this game isn't serious. Um, I'm going to tap on his cock. You notice know, a very realistic stuffed chicken is sitting on a corner table. You pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real! <laughs> oh, it is actually taxidermy though. Uh, must have been important to Colonel Sons when he was alive. Linda clip to the chicken's foot reads The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Oh. Um, I accidentally opened a door. Uh, Sister Candley, pick it up to try and identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar. A piece of wood floating in the lake. Summer of 69. No, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... <laughs> A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. From further inspection, you realise that the hair they're in isn't just silver in colour, it's actually made of spun silver. I mean, there's pictures, obviously. While the framed photo shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders, staying with a friend, they hold a fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. Look closely, there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. Pete went into business with Colonel Sanders' <laughs> grandfather. Man, oh man, that was it. So it turns out Titan's Creed been hiding his secret all along. Uh, first appears because Sanders is an old man visiting the pyramids in Egypt. 
Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. The adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor from the goatee and moustache combo sports. You think that must be Colonel Sans himself? Where's baby pictures themselves? Probably the same person who'd make their own face the logo of the company they founded, am I right? You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is too big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. And they say home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on and he wants you to taste it. Try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't know these low lows out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! Triple choice, guys! You decide that now is your moment and make a big move. You tell him you're cold, or you fess up and tell the truth. The truth it is... You confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. Oh, hey! I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Hmm, apparently. Yes, Tanner? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a samba. Dream sequence! Uh, oh, God. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. <laughs> In some jurisdictions, <laughs> isn't even legal. If the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are dropped when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it and him, presumably. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous! My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cooking? Do we take him down a peg or do we flatter him? Flatter him! You know, I think it might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by the feelings, you're on the verge of tears and able to speak. The answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning awaits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night! I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can get back, get you up to speed in the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I can believe that. Since I've been part of the big crank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him you better keep your dials to polite and respectful, I'm not that kind of girl. 
but he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, and I can get to know the little mechanical guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did, did she say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go of a talking pressure cooker. <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell the, the whole story. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, nothing happened. But the emotional connection. Wowzers. Miriam offers support. Oh! Oh, that's nice. That's legitimately nice. She's your best friend, so no matter what happens, she's going to give you support. The option is there is no option. She is your friend. Oh, Well, Miriam's is supporting you like what you do. Together with your bestie, you feel like you can do anything. When you arrive at school, however, you encounter your rivals in the quad. But, we'll have to find out what's happening with them next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube at a later date, I'm so sorry. Uh, but, but, whatever the case, if you are, then please do like, share, comment, subscribe. All those wonderful things. You need to subscribe because you'll need to find out when part three is going to be. And I will see you later. Bye.